My wife, who is 40 years old, and I, a 40-year-old man, have been married for 15 years. We have had our ups and downs. I have always tried to learn from the fights and improve our relationship. It is common in our country to live with family. The inheritance goes to sons in the family, so responsibility comes to sons to take care of parents. I still live with my mother. We used to live with my brother and his family, but I bought his share out, and he has now moved to another place. The property was divided into three parts, my mom, me, and my brother, so I paid one-third of the supposed worth of the property. The house was old and needed to be rebuilt. The house and the land are under my mom's name. When building the house, my wife suggested that I keep the property in my name because I would be spending my money to build the house. I talked to my mom, and she seemed concerned because there have been a lot of instances where sons got the property in their name and kicked their parents out. This had recently happened to our close neighbor, so my mom was on edge. Honestly, I was a bit hurt, but understood her concern. So I agreed that the house and land would still be under my mom's name. My wife said she was not happy and that my brother and his family might claim our house after my mom's passing. We fought a bit, and I told my wife to find a solution that would make her happy. My wife found a lawyer and created an official document signed in front of government officials and legally binding that stated, no matter what, I would get the inheritance and my brother would get nothing. My brother and his wife also signed that paper. I thought everything was settled and that everyone was happy. However, my wife was still not happy with this arrangement and she did not feel that the house being built was hers. She used to say this all the time. I was alone when the construction began and had to oversee everything myself. We had major fights and I complained that she was not helping me. She made no monetary contribution. She had a business that only earned enough for groceries. I used to get up every day at 6 a.m. and go to the construction site, come back home at 9 a.m., work full time, and check on construction during lunch before starting work again. The reason I had to be there was that workers would run out of materials and would just complain about the lack of supplies and stop working. I would personally check if anything would delay the work that day and buy and arrange things so that the progress would not be disturbed. My wife and I had massive fights. She even ran away for a few days without telling anyone. She came back as if nothing had happened. Then I called her brother and sister and said, we needed to talk and figure out a solution. We talked and she said she would improve and be more helpful. Our house was almost built at this point, so I accepted and things got better. Still, she would sometimes say the house didn't feel like hers. I would ignore it and I kind of understood because the property was under my mom's name. After two years, she got a high paying job. I still make two and a half times more than her as I used to make 10 times more. She saved a substantial amount of money, enough to put a down payment on the property, but not enough to outright buy it. I was happy for her and helped her buy a new property. She put 40% from her savings, obtained a 40% loan, and I contributed 20% from my savings. I worked day and night to find a property she liked. We agreed to buy it. I finally thought she would be happy to have her own property in her name, but she was not. No thank you, no smiling. She was just indifferent at best and sad and angry at her worst. I talked to her and said, why are you not happy? You have a property under your name. I thought this was what you wanted. Why not smile and at least say thank you? She just said, you have never thanked me for cooking and cleaning. Why should I thank you for this? It is just not our culture. She said she works 14 hours a day. She wakes up at six, leaves for work at eight, comes back at six, and when she is done in the kitchen, it's around eight. So technically, she is right. But I also work, I cook and clean. She cooks during weekdays and I clean while I cook during weekends and she cleans. This surprised me and led to an existential crisis. I felt like I worked so hard to help with small and big things, but I have not been able to make her happy. My father was an hurtful person, so it has always been in the back of my mind not to be like him. I feel like my effort to avoid being like any other hurtful husband does not matter. I want to keep my marriage fun and happy. I try to organize multi-day international vacations twice a year, 
but she is also not happy during those. She would complain about seeing similar things even in different countries. She never plans or suggests a place. She pouts during the whole vacation. We used to go out to eat every Friday evening, so she didn't need to cook on Fridays, but then she started complaining about the food and the places we would go, and that also broke down. We no longer do that. I helped as much as I could, but when I try to talk to her and say we need to improve as a couple, she just says we have been married for 15 years, and this is okay. There is nothing to improve, and there will be fights between couples, and this is fine. Now, for an update, this buying new property in her name thing happened two months ago. I kinda was expecting this to be a milestone and to bring new happiness into our lives. My wife would finally have a property in her name. I worked so hard for it. I could not talk to her for two weeks because I was literally looking for something that she would like every waking minute. After everything was finalized, I told her I was sorry that I was busy with this and let's celebrate by going out. We went out, but she did not talk to me. I ordered food and she didn't touch it. I asked her what was wrong. She didn't speak. I tried to joke, but she was cold toward me. I asked her the next day. She said she was irritated because of the heat. It was summer in my country. I thought okay. Then when I tried to kiss her, she would avoid it and refuse hugs and intimacy. I got so confused. This was supposed to be a major milestone and make us even closer and happier, but this continued for two more weeks. After that, something inside me died. I no longer want to do anything for her. I cannot be happy. I just feel like everything I do is useless. She now shows affection, but I no longer feel it. I just feel like no matter what I do, she will never be happy. I feel like she is just putting up a facade and acting happy now because literally nothing has changed. The new property is still in her name. The old house is still in my mother's name. I can no longer bring myself to laugh or be happy around her. I have been a grumpy person for two months now. I feel terrible and depressed. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one. After reading all this, man, your wife is spoiled. She wants the house in her name or your name for a house she didn't pay for that was your parents. Red flag, she's definitely super selfish. You helped her pay for a property. You supported her when she had little to no income and she's now dredging up all the years of housework but not contributing financially. She seems to find a complaint about everything. You need to sit her down and ask her why she isn't happy and what would make her happy. Then you need to share what you're upset about as well. If you find that there is no more love in the relationship or she doesn't want to talk through it or work through it, then cut the selfish woman loose. She wants things she doesn't deserve and is complaint number one. Comment two. Did you ever ask her what she wants? Because when she told you what she wanted from her husband, the man she chose to marry, he went to his mother and did what his mother wanted instead, disregarding his wife's feelings and desires. You can't undo what's been done. You need to prioritize your wife now. Even if you have to take care of your mother, you're not married to her. So she isn't the first priority, she is maybe second. Sit down with your wife with an open mind Calmly ask her what she wants, and unless it's physically impossible, you need to do it. You need to show her that she is a priority and her feelings and desires matter, even if your mother doesn't like it. Now, for the update, I tried to surprise my wife with a romantic dinner, but she acted like I didn't exist. A few days after my last update, I tried to talk to my wife about our relationship. I figured it was time to have a serious conversation especially since she promised to be more involved with us after our talk a few weeks back. We had a quiet evening at home, or so I thought. She was scrolling through her phone the whole time, barely listening to what I was saying. I mentioned that we hadn't spent any quality time together since moving into the new place. All I got was a short, I'm busy from her while she kept scrolling. It hurt a little, but I tried to stay positive. I thought maybe a romantic dinner would help us reconnect, you know? So I decided to surprise her with one the following Friday. I spent hours making her favorite meal, decorating the dining area with candles. I was so excited to see her face light up when she walked in. But when she got home, she barely noticed what I did. 
She just muttered something about being tired and walked into the bedroom. I felt deflated, but I tried to keep the mood up, so I asked her to eat with me. After dinner, she got a call from a coworker and went outside to take it. I was left sitting there alone at the table, feeling invisible in my own home. While waiting for her to come back in, I heard her laughing and talking excitedly outside. Just listening to her having such a good time was really painful. She finally walked back in, and I asked about the call, but she brushed me off, saying it was just work. I felt like I was being pushed further and further away. The next week, she was always on her phone, texting late at night. I didn't want to jump to conclusions, but it was hard not to notice. During a family dinner at my mom's house, I tried to talk to her, but she seemed completely disinterested. My mom asked about their plans for the weekend, and all she said was, I don't know. Then she changed the subject. I felt like I was losing her, and I didn't know what to do. I decided to confront her about her phone usage that night. When I brought it up, she snapped back at me, saying I was being controlling and that she needed her space. I was shocked. I just wanted to know what was going on with her. Things got even more complicated when I went to a birthday party for my niece. I noticed my wife laughing and chatting with some guy I didn't know. When I approached them, she introduced him as a new colleague. But something about the way he was acting with her just felt off. I tried to talk with them, but he was overly familiar with her. I didn't like it. After the party, I mentioned my discomfort, but she dismissed it, saying I was being paranoid. Then I confronted her about their lack of intimacy. She accused me of making everything about myself. I was just trying to understand what was happening between us. The tension escalated when I found out she made plans to go out with coworkers the following weekend without telling me. I reluctantly agreed to let her go, but I felt uneasy about it. The night she went out, I stayed home, trying to distract myself. I ended up checking her social media. I saw photos of her at a bar with that same colleague, arms around each other, laughing. My heart sank. I messaged her asking where she was, but she didn't respond for hours. When she finally came home, I confronted her about the pictures. She just got defensive, claiming they were just friends and that I was overreacting again. The argument escalated and she accused me of not trusting her. We ended up in a yelling match. I stormed out of the room, feeling like I was losing control of everything. The next day, I found a note from her on the kitchen counter. It said she needed time apart to think. I called her, but she didn't answer. A few days later, she came home with a suitcase, saying she was moving in with her sister. I stood there frozen as she packed her things. She told me it was for the best and that I should focus on figuring out my life without her. In the following weeks, I focused on work and tried to keep up with home responsibilities. It was hard to do both, but I had to. I learned that my mom was struggling with her health, which added to my stress. The reality of our situation hit me hard when I received a text from her saying she had changed her number. That was it. I felt completely lost. To answer a few questions, my wife and I have no children, and we have separate finances. We had been sleeping in separate rooms for about a month before she moved out. Am I the idiot for breaking up with my clingy boyfriend who couldn't handle my old friend's existence? I've been in a three-year relationship with my boyfriend, but ever since he moved abroad six months ago, things have changed. He's become clingy and obsessive, wanting constant communication and prioritizing me over everything. He gets upset if I don't reply quickly or talk about marriage, and it feels like his life revolves around me. When we argue, he blames me, gaslights me, and turns everything around, making me feel guilty. I love him, but I feel suffocated and drained. I'm unsure if this relationship is fixable or if I should let him go, as I am afraid of how much it would hurt him. He asked me to call him today, and I said no. He kept telling me he misses me and that he wants to call, and I told him to just talk through text messages. He started asking me for the reason, and I said simply because I just don't feel like it, and I don't have the energy for it. He started telling me he doesn't understand and that he sees me changing and feels like I am pushing him away. I called him and tried talking to him about it in a less direct way, and he is currently bawling his eyes out, telling me that if I feel like he's suffocating me, 
then I should leave him. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Hi, I don't know if it's the same for your boyfriend, but sometimes I too have very anxious or suffocating attitudes towards my boyfriend. As a person on the other side, I advise you not to give up. My boyfriend sat down with me and explained to me that he will always be there for me, but that I shouldn't behave in that suffocating way. He saw me cry a lot about this, but you learn by making mistakes. Talk to each other face to face if you have the chance. Comment 2. Sleep deprivation is abuse. Controlling behavior is abuse. Silence your phone and sleep. Silence your phone and see your friends. Take control of this out of control long distance relationship. Be clear about what you need and what you will accept in your interactions. Boundaries, they are hard. Think about the situation. It's not healthy for you. Big hugs. Now for the update. Here's the update. A few months have passed since the phone call where he suggested she leave if she felt suffocated. I took a break from the relationship to figure things out. I focused on my job, spending late nights working on projects to distract myself. One Friday night, I went to a coworker's birthday party at a local bar. At the party, I ran into an old friend from college, Mark, who I hadn't seen in years. We chatted and laughed about old times, sharing stories over drinks. My boyfriend texted me a bunch of times during the party, wanting to know where I was. I felt overwhelmed by his messages and decided to turn off my phone for a bit. The next morning, I turned my phone back on to find several missed calls and angry texts. He accused me of ignoring him and spending time with someone else. I tried to explain the situation, but he kept getting more upset, saying I was hiding things. During our next call, he brought up my friendship with Mark implying it was inappropriate. I insisted nothing was going on, but he threatened to end things if I didn't cut ties. For the next week, I tried to reassure him by inviting him to meet me at a local cafe. He agreed to come, but showed up two hours late, visibly upset and red-eyed. We talked about our relationship, but he kept bringing up his insecurities. I suggested we take a trip together to reconnect, and he reluctantly agreed. We planned a weekend getaway to a cabin in the woods, a place we used to visit. On the drive to the cabin, he got a call from a mutual friend who mentioned seeing me with Mark. He exploded with anger, accusing me of lying and betraying him. I struggled to calm him down, but he refused to listen. We arrived at the cabin and he locked himself in the bedroom, refusing to talk. After hours of silence, I finally knocked on the door, but he screamed for me to leave him alone. When I came back, I found him packing his bags, ready to leave without me. I tried to convince him to stay, but he said he couldn't trust me anymore. He stormed out, leaving me alone in the cabin. I packed up my things and drove home. Once home, I got a call from my mom, inviting me to a family dinner. The dinner was meant to celebrate my brother's recent job promotion. I reluctantly went, hoping to escape my recent troubles for a while. During dinner, my family asked about my relationship. I told them about the issues, and my dad suggested I should just break up with him. After dinner, I got a text from my boyfriend saying he couldn't take the uncertainty anymore. He announced he was moving back home permanently, wanting to be closer to me. The next day, he showed up at my apartment unannounced, wanting to talk. We sat down, and he demanded to know if I had been seeing Mark again. I reiterated that nothing happened, but he remained suspicious. The conversation escalated into accusations, leading to me finally losing my temper. He left my apartment. I realized that this relationship was just too toxic for me. Like, I really can't handle this level of jealousy and insecurity anymore. I need someone who trusts me and doesn't make me feel like I'm walking on eggshells all the time. So, I finally decided to break up with him for good. I sent him a pretty clear message saying that we need to end things and I just can't deal with his constant doubts and accusations anymore. If he tries to reach out again, I'll just ignore it and move on with my life. It's time for me to focus on me and find someone who actually brings me happiness, not drama. Edit. After the breakup, I felt a huge weight lift off my shoulders. I started focusing on myself and rediscovered my passions like painting and hiking. I also reconnected with friends I hadn't seen in a while. Surprisingly, I ran into Mark again, and we've been hanging out. Nothing serious yet, but I'm enjoying the friendship. Am I the idiot 
for refusing to be my girlfriend's doormat while she treats me like a backup plan. I work full time, model, and take care of my home. My girlfriend recently moved in with me, and I feel like she doesn't try to carry any weight. I do everything out of love, but at times I feel like she's being ungrateful. I pay the bills, wake up at 5 a.m. to drive her to work before I go to work myself, take a late lunch to bring her home after her shift, and head back to work. Then I cook dinner and spend the evening with her. Recently, she's been upsetting me. Situation 1. I'm sick with a bad allergy cold, but on the way home from work, I grocery shopped and cooked us dinner. I spent the whole evening watching Love Island with her rather than hanging out with my friends in the game. She knew I blew them off for her. The next morning, I woke up hungry but wanted to hang out with my friends before our busy day. I made our coffee and asked if she could reheat my food from the night before for me while I hopped online. She said, give me 30 minutes, I'm not hungry. I waited two hours until I went into my room and she was on the phone and doing her nails. I reheated my food and went to sit down and she yelled, can you bring me a napkin for my toes? I said, I'm eating. She came out and said, you could have brought me a napkin. You were right there. Now I messed up my toes and have to redo them. She said I was being spiteful by not getting her a napkin and that she planned on warming it up after her nails but didn't know she was being timed for getting my food to me in exactly 30 minutes. All I asked was that she communicate this rather than let me wait two hours. On top of this, the other day we got into a petty disagreement and afterward she made herself dinner and nothing for me. It's just a lack of consideration in my eyes. Last night, I asked her in what ways she feels that she goes out of her way for me or how she tries to make things easier for me and she was silent for a whole minute until she said, I clean sometimes. I lightly brought up how she seems ungrateful because one of the other things she does is complain if I don't do absolutely everything for her. For example, I take my lunch late every day to pick her up from work, then I head back to work. She grabbed a couple of groceries while at work and I let her carry the bags from the car to the door, about four of them. And she got upset and said, I'm so tired, my feet hurt, and I've been working all day. You could at least be carrying these, so I carried half of them. Finally, last night, she asked me if I'd like her to make me a bagel before work, and I said yes. She didn't. She doesn't even wake up to say goodbye to me before I head to the office. I hope I'm not over-exaggerating or being too hard on her, but I'm exhausted and starting to feel taken advantage of. I have a lot to offer financially. I have a wonderful job, and I am admittedly attractive and moving up in my modeling and now acting career. My family and friends all tell me I need to watch out for myself in regard to being used by people, and I'm just unsure at the moment. Before she got here, it was all, I'm going to take care of you. But now, she doesn't go out of her way in a thoughtful manner for me in the slightest these days, other than wanting to be intimate. In turn, I'm finding it hard to be intimate, and she's complaining about that as well, despite still not changing her behavior. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, I don't think you've over-exaggerated. It sounds like you do everything for her and she just kind of hangs out. How well did you know her in person before moving in? Going directly from long distance to this? You may just be learning that this is who she really is. It's easy enough to hide your slovenly behaviors from someone you're dating in person, let alone a long distance partner. You sound like someone who has their life together. You should have a talk with your partner about how you deserve to be with someone who also does. And right now, she is not it, so she has to shape up. Comment two. Sounds like you've got yourself your very own hobosexual. She's basically using you for money, intimacy, and life in general. You both met when you were very, very young, and people change a lot in this age range. It's okay if you don't share the same interests anymore. It's okay if you both want different things, but it sounds like she doesn't respect your needs, and she feels entitled to force you to do whatever she wants, whenever she wants, regardless of how you feel about it. Maybe it's time for counseling, but maybe it's also time for a change. Hugs and good luck. Now for the update. I decided I couldn't keep pretending everything was fine, 
So about a week after Olivia and I had that huge fight, I called in sick to work and planned to talk to her about everything going on. I knew it wouldn't be easy, but avoiding the issues felt even worse. So I decided to just go for it. I took the day off work, cleaned the whole apartment, and made her favorite dinner. I even lit some candles in the living room to set the mood. I really wanted to have a serious conversation with her without any distractions. Olivia came home late that night, saying she'd been super busy at work. She barely noticed the dinner, just walked right past it and plopped down on the couch with her phone. I went up to her and asked if we could talk, but she just sighed and rolled her eyes. She acted like we could talk later, like this was just some casual conversation. I was so frustrated, I told her that we needed to address our relationship now, like right now. She finally agreed, but she kept scrolling through her phone like I wasn't even there. I couldn't believe it. So I started listing out some specific examples of how she hasn't been helping around the apartment. I told her about the chores she doesn't do, the times she ignores my needs. She interrupted me, saying I was being dramatic and overreacting. Like seriously? Just because she was tired, I was done with the excuses. The conversation got heated and she accused me of always making her feel guilty. I pointed out the imbalance, how she always expects me to do everything for her, but when it's the other way around, it's like pulling teeth to get her to help. This just made her snap back more, and we ended up in a full-blown argument. In a fit of rage, she stormed out of the apartment and said she needed space. At that point, I just wanted to focus on work and forget about the argument. So, I pushed it all to the back of my mind and tried to keep myself busy. A few days later, I got a message from Olivia about going to her friend's birthday party. I was unsure about going, but she really wanted me to. So, I reluctantly agreed, even though I felt uneasy about it. I showed up at the party, but the whole time I just felt like something was off. I couldn't shake the feeling that we hadn't resolved anything. Then, across the room, I saw Olivia laughing and flirting with some other guy. I tried to brush it off, act like it didn't bother me, but I felt this knot in my stomach. It made me feel even worse. When she came over and introduced me to her friend, she didn't even mention the argument we had earlier. It was like everything was fine. I played along, but I couldn't help but notice how this other guy kept checking Olivia out. The more I watched, the more frustrated I got. It's like we're having all these issues at home, and here she is acting all cozy with some random guy. I decided to leave the party early, feeling more isolated than ever. A week went by, and things were still silent between us, just a lot of tension in the air. I found an unopened letter on the kitchen counter one day. It was addressed to Olivia, and curiosity got the better of me. I opened it, and found a note from a modeling agency. It mentioned a casting call for a couple's photo shoot. I connected the dots and realized that Olivia had been keeping secrets about her modeling ambitions. When she got home, I confronted her about the letter. She said she was going to tell me, but got busy. Her excuse was that it was just for fun and nothing serious. We ended up arguing again, and that's when I said I felt like a backup plan. She got mad and accused me of not supporting her dreams. That sparked a whole fierce debate. She even threatened to leave for good. I told her that if she wanted to pursue her dreams, she could do it alone. The way her face twisted in shock when I said that. She ended up storming out, slamming the door behind her. Another few days passed in silence. I was tired of waiting for her to decide what she wanted. I took control and signed up for the casting call myself. On the day of the audition, I walked in with confidence, ready to claim my own story. And then I saw her. She was sitting in the waiting area, looking surprised to see me, but she didn't come over. I just walked past her, feeling empowered. The casting director started asking me questions about my experience. As I answered, I felt a sense of satisfaction. I was taking a stand for myself, and I wasn't going to let anyone hold me back. It's been a couple of weeks now since I went to that casting call, and honestly, I've been feeling pretty good about everything. Olivia and I haven't really talked since that day, but I think taking that step for myself was kind of freeing. Like, yeah, things are messy, and our relationship is all kinds of broken right now, but I'm not just waiting around for her to decide I'm worth it. 
I've been focusing on myself more, hanging out with friends, and just trying to figure out what I want. I still don't know what'll happen with Olivia or if she'll even come back to talk things out, but I'm not in a rush anymore. If there's an update, I'll post it to my profile. I think I hit the character limit. To answer a few questions, Olivia and I have been living together for about six months. We started dating two years ago, but waited a while to move in. The argument that led to her storming out of the apartment wasn't the first we've had about her lack of involvement at home. I found her flirting with someone at the party very upsetting. I didn't know she had modeling aspirations until I found the letter. I signed up for the casting call to prioritize my own goals. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.